Hey everybody, Jason here. I hope you are all doing fine and dandy. Today I'm going to be looking at an infrared TS2 Plus thermal camera sent here by infrared. Now I'm not going to waste any time at all getting this out of the package because nobody cares about that. Let's see what they have sent me. I do apologize to the company that sent this. This has taken me way too long to get to. This thing has been here for like, I don't know, three or, well, as long as I've been not posting, okay? So it looks like we've got the main unit here, which is gonna have the thermal camera in it. And then it's got this other thing off to the side. And I, I have been wondering exactly what it is that is in this, like, I expected to get the that, but not this. All right, so inside the side pouch, we have a mount that looks like it's gonna hold the camera on one side, and then on the other side, it maybe looks like it's set up to hold a phone. Will that really unscrew that far? Aha, okay, it will unscrew that far. So you clamp your phone on one side of it, thermal camera on the other side, and then that gives you a grip so you can hold the thermal camera. So this is what everybody's really curious about, right? Or maybe slightly curious about. What attracted me the most about this camera is that the specs show that it has a pretty decent resolution and also a decent frame rate. Um, so let's just dig in and see what that is all about. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. So it came with a USB-C 90 degree adapter, which that's probably handy in some cases. It's basically just a USB-C extension. So I like that it came in a hard case. It's sort of like the, the FLIR, FLIR 1 Pro stuff. And boy, is that cool or what? Huh. It's got a little bit of weight to it. So looking at this thing just a little bit closer, we can see that it has Oh, it's got the resolution written on the front, 256 by 192, which I really like. It has a focusable lens like the Seek Compact Pro that I have. And it feels like it's of reasonable build quality. So to test this thing out, I'm going to be using this phone. It says use the Infrared Search app for Search Series products and retrieve the Xtherm for Xtherm Series products. Okay, so we're gonna go with Xtherm, install it. And now that I got the app installed, let's open it up and see what happens. Cool, it's gonna direct us to portrait mode, which I like. I uh, would like to take pictures and record video. Yes, I'll let you do that. Oh, uh, you wanna record some audio too? Yeah, we, we can do that. Remember to access your photos and media on your device. Yes. Oh no, Herm. Okay, well, this is gonna require Another cell phone. Should we press the red button or should we press the black button? We're gonna fire up some Google Translate. Come on, baby. We use one phone to look at the other phone. Agree to start using the app. Okay, so the red button is yes. All right, so we're gonna say agree. And you know, it looks to me like we're in. It's not saying anything like connect the camera or anything, but I'm gonna go ahead and connect the camera. Ooh. Always open external infrared when it's connected, yes. Come on, baby. Okay, right away, I'm liking the frame rate. It feels a little bit weird because it's in ooh, black and white. All right, we're definitely seeing some thermal. You can see everywhere my hand has been laying. That's pretty cool. I'm thinking there are most likely other settings on here to make it like all pretty and colorful and stuff. Um, let's see. Oh, we got white hot, black hot, iron rainbow, rainbow HC. And there's more of the colors and stuff we would expect to see out of the Seek. You know, look at the frame rate. That is not shabby, honestly. The frame rate on this thing is actually pretty decent. So temperature units, Fahrenheit, Celsius. Well, I gotta be honest, I, was not expecting to like this thing. This is this is really not shab. How's this focusing go? Let's uh, let's let's just bring you right on in here with me. Okay, so I've turned the lens all the way one way, full stop. 
Now I'm going to turn it back the other way and see if we can bring this workbench into focus. We can. Now, I don't think there's any visible light here. This is, I mean, there's obviously visible light. There's lights on in the room. This is what is coming out of the thermal camera and only thermal imaging. You can actually see the crappy LED strips in that monitor. Well, that's a pretty stinking neat camera. Oh my goodness, what are all these other settings? So we've got correction in Celsius or Fahrenheit probably. We can set an ambient temperature, uh, distance of one, what? Look here, they make it loud and clear. They're gonna watermark it. You can just turn that right on off. That's nice. Auto shutter, timer off. You know, there are actually quite a few settings on this thing and it's probably gonna take me a, a while to go through it. I really am liking the frame rate. Primarily, I use thermal cameras for troubleshooting electronic circuits and sometimes you wind up with a, a short or a little blip of current that's just so fast that Sometimes you're lucky to catch it on thermal imaging. We're looking at 25, isn't this like 25 frames a second? I'm getting like 25 frames a second on a thermal camera, which that is, is that right? Am I really getting 25? Infrared T2 plus specs. Frame rate up to 25 Hertz. There it is right there. Ooh, that's that's pretty impressive for a thermal camera, really. Well, I know your time is valuable, so I'm not gonna waste any more of your time. You all wanna see how this thing actually works in a real world situation. So then, I have in front of me an iPhone 12 Pro PCB that was sent here all the way from New Zealand. And this board has what I believe to be a short, and I'm gonna have a look at it with thermal imaging. So I'm all the way, I'm all the way down on the board here. And there we go, no visible, this is only thermal. All right, now I am right down on top of the board. I'm gonna turn the power supply on. And instantly we can see the temperature coming through that hole. So later on during this recovery, I had no problem seeing the boost I see getting hot and, and flashing. And then on the other side of the board, we can see a single shorted capacitor that was actually causing that boost IC to get hot. This camera don't have any problems seeing one of these single little capacitors on a cell phone logic board. So here's that same short just a little bit closer. And what can I say? This thing can do it. You could actually fit a pile of these components on a grain of rice. It is significantly small. So then how about outside of the shop? I'm just kind of, let's see, my laptop's over here on the table. No visible, only thermal. You can see where my butt's been editing video for the last 30 minutes or so. Wait a minute, what's that cold spot? I do greatly appreciate the frame rate, um, 25 hertz, which is pretty decent. Here's off behind my air conditioner, which now you can actually, you can see where the tape's leaking. So you like the pistol grip better? That dog don't look right. Yeah, this pistol grip, it's better than holding the phone. Yeah. It's way better. Cool. Little dog. You want a treat? How about a chicken one? You want this one? Don't bite my hand. Look at that. You can see the dog's footprints. And yours. Nice. Black hot thermal, bruh. Oh, black hot. It turns it, inverts it. Black hot is superior. You know, it was designed to spot living things. People don't look right with this. People don't look right through it. Oh, that is bad. The cute little camera on the front. Look, look. That's <laughs> where there really is something to be said about the resolution of this thing. You can actually see the individual hairs on this dog. Wow, so check out how it is actually monitoring and keeping track of like multiple temperature spots. All right, here we go. Let's not burn our hot dogs. From the, from oh, the, it's so blindingly hot. Look, them wieners aren't hot, though. Set it to black hot. This is cooking the proper way. All right, black hot. Oh, yeah, now you can see the wieners. You can even see the lines on them. Oh, they look burnt because it look, looks like they got big old burnt spots on them. Hmm. I'm not completely sure, but I think 
somebody has a new favorite thermal camera. So if you can't tell, I am actually really liking this camera. And if the macro abilities and the frame rate and the resolution wasn't enough, let me just show you what I figured out. So all I'm gonna do is connect this thing through the extension cable directly to my laptop. No drivers required. As soon as I connect it, I can hear the thermal camera click, click, followed by a USB connect. And then all I'm gonna do is run the inbuilt Windows camera app. Oh, we better switch cameras so that it uses the thermal camera instead. And there you go, no software, this camera, right out of the box, connects to my laptop. Look at there, you can actually see the, the beams in the ceiling right here. So this allows me without any hassle at all to plug this thing directly into Open Broadcaster and use that for capturing thermal imaging while I'm doing a, a, a YouTube video. Now, I don't have any settings for like, uh, you know, changing the thermal properties or the different color gradients and stuff, but I'm sure there's third-party software that makes this completely possible. But uh, yeah, there you have it, a thermal camera that will set up as a standard web camera. And uh, I'm just, I'm tickled, so sweet. So there you have it, folks. This is the Infrared TS2 Plus thermal camera. And I really just can't think of anything else to say about this thing. If you are interested in purchasing one of these, I'm gonna leave links in the description below to buy this. And um, that's it for this one, everybody. I'll see you next time. Have a good day. All right, so here we go outside with this thing in absolute, complete total darkness. And the added resolution sure makes a pretty big difference on how far you can see. Um, with thermal cameras that have the lower resolution, that you know, everything out there just kind of turns into a blob. But it is like pitch dark out here. There is, you know, there's some maybe some visible light coming off the sky, but it's nighttime. I'm pretty sure I would be able to see a squirrel all the way on the other side of the yard. Maybe white hot mode. Black hot? Either one. We got a jumbo jet flying over. Wow, the resolution is actually good enough to see the heat on that jet. Nice.